Hello, Floss Tube and Quilt Tube. I, this is Bristol Blue. My name is Amy. If you're first time watching, thank you for stopping in and watching my channel. I have, uh, this is, I believe, video number 11. And um, I'm going to start out with cross stitch updates, but I am a quilter. And my quilting does kind of move into cross stitch because I make project bags. And thank you for joining us, joining me today. Um, I've got, it's been uh, five weeks since my last video, and I apologize for that. But we've had a few things, uh, a couple things happen. Well, actually one thing. I don't know why I want to throw in a whole bunch of other things. Um, my mom had surgery earlier this month. Um, and so I was taking her to and from appointments, and I stayed with her for about four, three or four or five days um, to get, so uh, she could, she wasn't alone. <laughs> she had um, retinal detachment surgery. And four years ago, she had this done before. So this is the second time. And um, fortunately, nobody seems to know why or how it happens. So I did grab, this is my water bottle that I got in Colorado and I have all these stickers on it from all the different, some of the places that I went to. And so while I was at the, we went to Rochester Mayo for her surgery and when she went into recovery, I grabbed a little sticker off the, <laughs> for being a great patient, a little sticker off of the counter to add to my uh, souvenir bottle. <laughs> So, since my last video, which was on June uh, 24th, which was when it was published, and I planned to do this yesterday, but I ended up uh, picking up a portion of the overnight shift, and so I was a little busy yesterday. Um, and uh, it's become official now that I am now working seven shifts per pay period, so every two weeks I only work seven shifts. And uh, they're either overnights or PMs, so I do have my morning days, hopefully. <laughs> that could potentially change at some point if they need me, but uh, that's kind of the plan. So, But I keep myself very, very busy. Um, I cross-stitched quite a bit while Mom was um, in surgery and after surgery while I was home with her, however. Um, and as I go through the projects here, I'll... Uh, explain some of my frustrations and um, stuff. Um, so I've kind of, I haven't cross-stitched for a few days. Um, well, actually, that is a lie. I did get a new start in. <laughs> I did get a new start in, um, but I didn't stitch for a couple of days. But uh, the first one we're going to show here, it's in my uh, K-Facet bag is Smith Sampler, and that is from the Scarlet House. Sorry for the glare, and they did take it out of the package, but the lighting in here is really bad um, this morning, so I didn't want to, I had to close curtains and cover some things so it wasn't so bright, but here is where I am. Let's see, I did bring this out here. I started this on March 26th. It is on 32 count cream and sugar and I'm using the called for classic color works and Belle Swa and some DMC. So this is where we are right here and I'm not sure if you can see it but I'm going to point it out right now. There is a spot and I need to get my Tide pen out and hopefully that will come out. Um, so keep your fingers crossed, everybody. I'll let you know on my next update whether or not I was able to get that out. But I did quite a bit of stitching on this one um, earlier this month. So we are there. I can't wait. I want to get to the that uh, little basket in the middle. I love baskets. It'll be fun. So that is where I am with that this back in the bag and I'm keeping all of my uh, floss in this bag here. Oh, with silks I have to keep them in a the little baggie. So here's all the 
the floss I have with that. I haven't gotten these on floss rings yet. I, I ran out of these little floss eggs, so I have um, been playing with some ideas as to um, different ideas I've used in the past. And I don't have one on here. Some cardstock that I have, and uh, but it's not thick enough. And if you pull too hard, it rips kind of through the through the through the paper. So, and then I have this little thing for my little floss keeper, so I can keep my little extra little threads in here. And I had several little pages on here. So, um, the more threads that I use in a project, the more pages I'll put in my little floss keepers. So that's that one, Smith Sampler. And I think I have a note on here. It's because I'm using 32 count. It's a cream and sugar, and I believe it is. I can't remember who it was made by. Um, that it's probably going to be larger than the original project call for because I am using a larger fabric, count fabric. So there's that. And then I did a little work on just get a tasket. And that's this one right here by the Rosewood Manor. Love this project. And here are the threads for that. They're on a ring. They're all week style works. This is my little needle keeper for this project. And because the colors are so very close to each other, I put a chart, I copied it, cut it out, and stapled it to the inside of my thing, and then numbered what page of the, <laughs> of the keeper it's in so that I can keep track of what's what. Um, otherwise, I was taking my little pieces and putting them next to the one that's on the ring that had the name on it to make sure I had the right floss because I have um, found myself putting the wrong color in and having to rip it out and start all over again. I'm doing this one on 40 count milk and honey and it's from Fiber on a Whim and I believe that's who made the fabric from uh, Smith Sampler. So let's get this. This is on in my little rabbit bag that I made myself. Little rabbits. Um, and this is where I'm at with this. I last worked on this little motif right here. And I got off on the count. So I've got to rip out and start over. But I thought I could get away with it. But I don't think that I'm going to be able to. So, But this one here is such a fun stitch. I did all of this. Um, while I was with mom, worked on that at her house. Well, my son kept things going at home. I did go to work and stuff from her house too. So, but uh, so I worked in that for a little few days, and then I went back to another one. Um, tried it stick in the rotation and work you know three or four days on a project but in some instances I'll end up working like seven or eight days on a project just because it's the only one I have with me <laughs> or whatever but Rosewood Manor is another one that I'm working on by Brenda Gervais. This one I am I started this one on November 30th and uh, it was started on November, yeah, November 30th. And here I am with this one. I'm off on my counts on the house, but I'm okay with being off. <laughs> it's easy enough to rip out and start over. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with that basket that's on top of the roof. I don't know what to do with it, to be honest with you. I 
in previous videos I discussed how I did that. That's two different threads. Uh, and I'm not sure I like it. And I may rip that out and do that over again. But I didn't get very far, much farther on this one at all. So I did a little bit more of stitching on the house to get the second story. Or whatever you want to call that. That first floor or whatever it is that it fits on there. I've got my threads in this little bag and these are my original little thread keeper thingies that I made myself I just fold it up in there so I can keep my own threads in there but that's simple enough for me to find what threads I'm working on and using at the moment and here's my ring of floss kind of a mess but we've been digging into each and every one of them to get through that then and this one is in my bag and this olive juice I think it's her name on Instagram can't think of Tori <laughs> I, I should have wrote it I should write that down on my card too all of the the stuff about my bags too that I made because I have a new one that I've made now and uh that one's fun. I enjoy that one. That's a... and we know we're getting to that one. This one here is a little bit tight. That's the reason why it never went for sale. <laughs> it just fits. Just fits in there. Oh, I've got my 8x8 uh, Q-stamp in there as well. So that makes it a little tighter. This one here. Forgot to put that in there. And then I worked on Cornwall Cottage sampler gorgeous gorgeous one another one by rosewood manor and i am this far along on it and because I, the Tisket a Tasket, I got off on that. I decided it was time to start something different. And so I stitched this little motif right here and started this. And then the bottom one, I got off on my count. So that one got put away. <laughs> but, you know, I just keep moving on. And then when it comes back up in rotation, I'll fix the mistake and um, move on to get that taken care of. And that's a that one is stitched on 40 count milk and honey by fiber on a whim and it's using all the called four weeks dye works and they're all being kept in this little book that I made because it is in my coffee bag <laughs> with my Colorado black is it black Canyon yeah black Canyon keychain that's on there and started this one on May 16th and these are all the call fours for that it's not a there's like only one two three four five or six different colors so that one's easy to keep track of the greens are somewhat similar so that one is going on so because I got off on that count it was time to I figured it was time for a new start and when I typically <laughs> lately <laughs> I think that's what I've decided I'm doing is then this happened before the last time I was like consistently making mistakes it was time to start something new so I started something new but I didn't have a bag for it so I needed to make a bag and you know laundry basket quilts is my favorite so and plus I wanted to try something um, with making bags that uh, I hadn't done before, but I like piecing. And so I wanted to piece a block on the front or the back of my bag. And so I actually went into, and I wanted it to be blue and white for whatever reason. And so I went into my bin of laundry basket quilt blue and whites that I'm collecting. I throw in um, fat, co uh, fat quarters, I throw in 10 inch squares, I throw in charm packs, uh, yardage, <laughs> I'm collected. So I've got a bin just full of it. 
and I had um, made some blocks a couple years ago and uh, the little orphan blocks and there's log cabins and there's I was trying to make up my own little design and stuff for like table topper but that just got put aside so they're all in in that bin with all that fabric and I had also made this block the uh, what do you tree of life or whatever it's called see it's so big it won't even fit in here so I figured what I wanted to do was make the block the whole front of the bag. So I took the seam out in between these rows. And that's where I put the zipper for my bag. The inside is lined with uh, one of the fabrics. I think it's this one right here. So that's lined in there. And there's my bag. I put the same fabric as the... Um, binding and then I backed it in the polka dot and I think that turned out pretty good um, it's super large it's like it's you know typically my bags are like 14 inches square and this one's like 16 so if I make something similar to this again because I really like this design this block if I make another one I'll do it in smaller blocks um, it's all just squares and half square triangles, so that's why like the dots don't match up. But I think if I did this again, I would try to make some of these whole pieces rather than half square triangles or something. But it's all twelve and a half inch squares, so that's why it's so large. So I'm plan to make myself a needle book too, so I can keep track of my threads because right now. I'm only using this right now but I had also made this block and I think this is gonna be in the front of my needle book and then I'm gonna use the same two fabrics for the front and back cover the inside lining I think in the back cover so I'll be making that and hopefully that'll be done by the time my next video comes out and we shall see but the project that I started is Jane Hopkins 1875 from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I love this. I could not wait to get started. And I was also short, well, I'm short more DMC, but I'm using all the DMC of the conversion on the back of the chart, the DMC stuff. And I went to Joann's and they don't have the, what are the numbers? They don't carry the 01, 02 numbers. They start at 100 in, or B2500 or whatever, but um, they don't have anything. They don't have those. So I'm going to have to figure out where those are coming from. Um, I'm playing with another idea as I'm working on this one because there is so much floss. There's only 20 some colors in here. And so I was playing with a floss drop idea. And what I did was I went to Joann's and I got little popsicle sticks or craft sticks, they're called Park Lane craft sticks. You get 50 of them in the bag. And I got my drill out <laughs> and I drilled the holes in the top so I could put them on a ring and this is just a small two inch ring I'm probably gonna need a three inch ring or four inch ring when it gets all said and done I painted it black with chalkboard paint because I did get um, a white chalk marker and I thought I it the finest tip that they had is still too big especially when you have four digit DMC numbers because I thought I could use the chalk and put the the number of the floss on here and it works but it's the, the tip is too fat I think if I have two numbers that's fine three numbers it gets slightly a little hairy too but the, the tip is too fine so what I decided to do was and I wanted to put more than one on one of these is I took the actual DMC tag that had the number on it and wrapped the floss around it and right now, any extra floss 
when I pull it off to do some stitching is just wrapped around the top of that. But I wanted to keep that in like a little needle book thing like I have been doing. So I've got four of these put together now with two, four, six, eight of the colors to get started. So we'll see how that whole idea works out. I had also purchased these tags, another park lane thing. So I thought maybe I could drill holes in the bottom of this. I don't have a big enough drill bit. In, I have a quarter inch drill bit, but that's not big enough to be able to stick the floss through and drop it. Um, so I got to get myself a half inch. There's another toolbox I can look in. I did inherit and collect all of my dad's old tools and stuff, but he did get rid of a lot of his woodworking stuff, including um, some of those items. But uh, so I have one more toolbox to go through that I can see if I have a half inch drill bit. I thought I had like, I have everything. <laughs> Just saying, there's a lot of tools. So I'm gonna try something with this. These are also wood. Um, I had to figure out the right method in drilling through these the sticks without splitting the wood. So um, I'm working on that and I might have some sort of a, but they're, they're little they're thin little eighth inch little pieces of wood scraps and I could paint them these I painted black obviously and I could do these in all different colors um but I thought I could try something with these um because you could get them on Amazon if it works out these are like my prototypes in my test cases how many come in this one I think there's eight of them in this bag they're fairly inexpensive, especially if you have to win coupons, which I did. Um, so, to my stitch now, <laughs> I'll put that aside. And so now I am stitching this on 36 Count Ticonderoga from Needle and Flax. I got this from Welcome Stitchery in Blue Earth, Minnesota, on my way back from Colorado. Mom and I made a stop, and I have gotten this far. And once again, I made a mistake. I'm not sure if you can see it right off the bat. <laughs> but this is pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> it's supposed to be going downwards. So I got to rip that out and start that all over. So, and the new thing that I learned on this is the satin stitch. So I got two of those in there. And so I started working on the border on the far left side. And this is going to be fun. This is a huge piece of fabric. I think it's a fat half. It's, I have it written on the bag in here. Where is it? I guess I don't have it. Um, it's huge, like a yard of fabric or something like that. But this is half of it. See, you can't even see it all. Ta -da! <laughs> it's big, and I really like the color, and I think it's going to be... It's a little darker than the picture on the pattern, but I think that'll work out just fine. So, so I'm excited about this one. Not only about the, the project itself, but the bag that I made out of that quilt block. And uh, and I quilted it in just a great pattern. And I... On all my bags, I bind to the front, stitch it to the front, and then I hand stitch tack it down in the back. So, yeah, it's huge. And I thought I had. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you this in my last video. But when I was in Colorado, I picked this up in Telluride. It's a little craft, my little tote bag that I got of all of the of the city so there's the the name of it and then the gondolas that we rode on and and it's uh the same picture on the back but i just love this bag i take it to work with me i have uh, 
lunch goes in there. My wallet. So yeah, this I could fit both the eight and a half, eight by eight Q snap and the eleven in here, and still have plenty of room. So this bag holds a lot. And uh, like I said again, I might make that block again just smaller instead of two and a half, maybe two. And that might change. That else. And I started this on July 25th. I'm using the card that came with the the book with the pattern. I'm the the stitch count on this is 217 by 290, and I'm using all the called for DMZ. I just have to get those double digit flosses, tin and light violet and whatnot. I, they're just not there at uh, Joann's, at least my Joann's. I may try to um, go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's and see if they carry them there. Um, but I wanted to get going on it quickly and I wanted to use, since you had to buy a lot, I figure better keep the cost down because that fabric was a pretty penny. Um, that very large piece of fabric. Um, so, what else? Um, I wanted to do like a trunk show of the bags that I do have for sale in my Etsy shop. Um, cross stitch related. And the latest ones that went out are my Lori Holt Granny Square bags. There are four of them. One has sold. And so that's gone out. And here is the red, yellow, and blue one. I've got polka dot lining in these bags. I've got a tape measure backing on that, and the same fabric is used for the binding. It is hand quilted on the front and hand stitched uh, gray square cross stitch on an Ada. And I pieced the gray square block. And I put some extra fabric across the top on this one. So it is hand stitched, big hand stitch quilting on the top and bottom so you can see that on the inside of the bag too. So there's an orange one that uh, sold on the back that had a patchwork back on it. You can see the picture of it, the, the sold one on the on the website. If you want to go out there and take a look, links will be below. Here is the yellow one. At least I'm calling it the yellow one. I put a yellow back on it with a floral print that was kind of, I mean, that coordinated with the yellow that was on here. And then this one is big stitch, hand stitched with the same DMC threads used to create the granny square stitched cross stitch on the Ada and the granny square block yellow zipper and the black and white polka dot lining and then you could have I did quilt the back in a grid pattern you can see there with a yellow thread and you could see all that inside there so those are out on the shop they are a little bit pricier just because they are so much hand work done on them the green the, the cross stitch the block itself and then the big stitch hand stitching they took a little longer to to make um than than others so they are a little bit more expensive i just five dollars more or something like that but they are a little bit more here's another one this one here's in pinks and teals uh, greens and and browns and i have another granny square in there um, this one here has a, I used the papers, and it's written in the description, crazy papers, I think they're called, crazy quilt papers. Um, I had gotten them in a subscription box from the Fat Quarter Shop, and so I made that using coordinating, the same coordinating colors from the front of the block to make the back, and then I did a small grid patchwork quilting on that and this also that I showed this still also has the black and white polka dot interior and of course my label is on there the back side has the heart on it but 
I've been sewing those into the, the binding on my older bags, the previous bags before I got those, they aren't there. So when I do, if I sell a bag that doesn't have one, I um, what I've done is, I'll show you when this one stitched it right here. Just threw it in the sewing machine and stitched around it and put it in there on the inside. But these, I've got two of these spools by J. Rick Refresh, Fresh, and I've got uh, spools around the back. And the yellow spool tops in the middle, in the lining, which is the same fabric on the outside. And there are two of those. And they are the same size. Or it looks like one's a little bit bigger. But that's what you get when you get <laughs> when everything's hand done. <laughs> and then these, I got two of these, J Wrecker Fresh. And I did use the striking black and white stripes. I went and bought some more of that so I can do some more because I'm in the middle of making another bag. Inside here is the spool tops for the lining. And again, there are two of those. J. Rigger Fresh. I love J. Rigger Fresh fabric. So here's some teacups and teapots. Um, and inside here is a polka dot chalk. This is her coffee chalk fabric. And inside this one comes with a pouch. A little pouch that has coffee beans. On it, so it's all fully quilted, fully lined. The brown zipper and this has got a black zipper so that comes they come together so that includes pouch i've got two of these vinyl bags with the coffee just like the one i have for myself and the teapots and they have charms on them i'm putting charms on all of them when they go out in the mail so if there's not a picture with a charm then it's just because i forgot to put it on but before it goes out like the last one, I put it on before I mailed it. And uh, so it wasn't photographed with it, but I've got the little charms on there, the Tim Holt hangers and, and charms. So I've got two of those. I've got this aqua coffee bean with the teapots. This one also comes with a bag, a little aqua spiral with coffee bean inside so that goes along with that one um, inside there is a chalkboard with writing text and stuff it says i like coffee job them i can't let that got off manufactured wools and spice yeah it's the text and light bulbs. <laughs> light bulbs on that side, text on this side. I've got lots more of this fabric and I'd like to make some more of those. Here's another one, very similar. I think it's, I have two of these. One's got a white zipper, one's got an aqua zipper, teapots on the back of that one. And this one here also has a spiral fabric steam bag with coffee this one's a little bit tinier it feels a little smaller than the last one because it's short on the fabric but uh that goes with that bag and then with my cory turner hunt anyway miss olive juice on um instagram her fabric line i have a pink text Dreaming, trust, believe in yourself. You know, this goes always keep learning. Very positive note fabric. Um, pink zipper. Um, I have a heart binding on this one with a button inside. So you have your choice between vinyl and non vinyl, but it's all fully lined. And I 
have the same one here in, in her charcoal black fabric. Turn them on it. These don't have my logo or my label on it, but uh, you'll get one. This one here's got the button fabric for the binding as well. That one, and then another one where I have used the floral believe. This is believe in yourself across the top with a floral inside and just the floral on the back. And it's just got a solid color, which matches the that part of a flower in there for the binding. Same floral for the inside upper part of that. And that's there. And then I've got Brenda Gervais, Sister Sandy Gervais um, fabric line. I call this the typewriter set. <laughs> that's what's on the back of all of these, if not on the front. I've got one that I call dueling typewriters. Um, but the whole fabric line is hers. And it's got a stripe with some hearts going down it. And then um, I used for the binding in this one, but it's got all different little mo floral motifs and your telephone. And... So there, this one here is the dueling one because it's got a typewriter on the inside and a typewriter on the back side. And again, all of her fabric. This one here just has the typewriter on the back. But the same thing on the front and a different fabric across the top and I used a red gingham which is not part of our fabric line but that I had in my stash for the binding on this one and then my original bags I have three of them left um, when I first started making bags and selling them for Tim Holtz this one here's a Christmas one the Christmas fabric um, the letter tiles in the back I sent I centered that in there inside is just a dictionary text print that's kind of faded and then I'll pocket inside using the same tile fabric this is fully lined all enclosed this is before I started putting I prefer the bindings on them so these are kind of like the ones you sew all together and then pull it all the way through so I have that one. This one here is also, it's from it's his Christmas line from a couple years ago. But he's just got a plaid. Yeah, this has got a red stripe lining with a pocket inside. It's easy to put pockets on those. But I did like having, I also like having the lining bound or quilted as well these i just quilted the batting to the the fabric and then put it all together put the pocket on the inside lining and then stitched it all together and another one a text print all christmas related winter wonderland be joyful peace on earth season's greetings a snowflake top this also has a pocket and the dictionary or faded text print on the inside and a patchwork back and the fabric i used i have in the description on my website so if you're interested in any bags please go out there and take a look um i'm always adding to it um I'm, right now i'm kind of and we get to the quilting section next i'll talk about um another bag two bags that are in the in the works right now and they are hexy related i gotta kick back into hexies again so i'm working on those one is get ready to be quilted and the other one i am creating the hexies and we'll lay those out to a pattern but uh, so if you don't want to watch the quilting portion of this floss tube video then um now is your time to um Go watch some others. Go watch Floss Tube. Love Floss Tube. <laughs> I watch a lot of people. Um, so 
All right, let's do a, oh, the other, I think the other thing I wanted to mention about, I forgot to mention this. I'm so sorry if you're, if I lost you already, but for finishing, when I was at um, Joanne's getting those craft sticks and tags, I got these. They are Tim Holtz um, ribbon trims and garnishes, but they come in all kinds of vintage colors. I'm not sure how much is in with each one of these. One yard each of the colors. So there's pinks and reds and yellow and a gold and an orange and then the blues and purples and greens in this one. So I, with some finishing of the cross stitch projects, I got to get some smaller projects started. So um, I'm thinking pillows and and whatnot and maybe these might even get sold on the bags they're velvet velveteen velvet so yeah these are really wonderful they're beautiful they're only like eight dollars for the package and then again use your coupons so all right with that being said we're going to um get into the quilting updates and i'm going to show you we're going to start with my mom's quilt. Um, I am making my mother a quilt, and I got a, a pattern. I happened to be at Joanne's one day and bought this this magazine and was paging through it at my mother's house, and this quilt was in there, and mom's like, ooh, I really like that. She likes half square triangles, pinwheels, and whatnot. So I am making this quilt for her. This quilt, the, the the pattern is for is called Lady of the Lake. And I believe I'm not sure how big it gets. I forget it's in here somewhere, but I don't know how to read it. 64 by 64. And here is a picture of the layout of that. It's five by five block layout. Mom's is going to be seven by seven. She wants it to fit her queen size bed and she's doing it in golds, teals, and a, I don't know, I even know how to, what to call this background, but this is what one block looks like. This is like the far left one because as I attach them, I don't need the, the center piece, but, uh, these are the colors, and they're a mismatch of all different kinds. There's Kim Deal, Laundry Basket Quilts. Um, and what inspired it is we went to a store in Madison, Wisconsin, near me, about two hours. Um, they had a, and I don't think in that video I actually even posted that picture, but there's a table topper that was made with these colors. This is the background. And I think it's called Shingles Toolbox something or other. You'll have to go back to that video to figure. I can't remember what the name of it is. I have to look at one of the um, salvages and one of the things. But I've got, this is the first block for row two. I am ready to finish off row two. So I used up, you have to make a lot of half square triangles. <laughs> a lot of them. So I am... I've got a process that's kind of like my leaders and enders process until I get a whole bunch of, you know, the whole thing kind of is the leaders and enders project. But I've got a row of seven blocks or a row of seven, you know, across and seven meaning these center pieces. But they're all different. These are laundry basket quilts. These two fabrics here used for the center big triangle. This one here comes with the, goes with the line for the background of the, it says, I call it a cedar shingle or something like that by Toolbox, something or other. But this is like really huge. It's going to be like 100 by 100 or something like that. So she, we laid out um, the seven block pad across her bed and then down the side to see if that's how she want, how long she wanted it or how big she wanted it to be. So it's going to, and it's going to take a minute, but uh, I'd like to get it to her by Christmas. We'll see how that all works out. But I've got a little setup here. I went 
um, from Joann's, I purchased a bunch of these foam board things and I cut it up and I put batting on it. So I keep my, you know, what I'm working on here. So right now I don't have any triangles made. They're all used up. So I've got, I'm making them the old fashioned way, putting a line down the center, sewing on all both sides, squaring them up. And these are all of the gold fabrics that are on here. And we picked some of those. We picked up some more of those while we were in at the quilt shops in, in um, Blue Earth, Minnesota, on our way back from Colorado. I've got a whole stack. And these are three inch squares. They get the, the final um, triangles get squared to two and a half. So these are those. I started this on May 8th. And this is as far as I've gotten so far. Here is the board with all of the, the teal colors triangles for all the pinwheels that go on each of the corners so I ran out of triangles for the gold portions and so I am working on getting those done I've got one in the sewing machine already um, but here's some more of the squares are already cut if I need to make more of those and I think I have plenty I got plenty of that I've got big these are they end up being eight and a half, but um, these are nine inch squares. And then I will sew a background square to it, make triangles out of those and square them down to eight and a half. Here's one right here. <laughs> this needs to be squared up, but it's all ready to go. I've got some of those already set. This is going to be the binding on there. It is a um, textured fabric. So it's a woven fabric. That's going to be the binding. And I don't know what the backing is going to be yet. Don't have the faintest clue. We're going to worry about that. Mom and I will look into that one. Um, we get that far <laughs> to see what on the market is available that matches color wise so that's kind of our, our deal right now it's like I hope I have enough fat quarters and half yard cuts that we've picked up along the way to finish off the quilt itself so that is in the works And I have it in this bin. So let's see, what else is we are we working on? Or is there anything associated with that that I need to get to talk about? I am also working on a quilt for a coworker. She wants a quilt for her granddaughter. Her birthday is the end of November, and. I found she said her granddaughter is really into giraffes. So I went out on Pinterest in the internet to find a giraffe pattern, and I had seen one um, in my searches before. So, excuse me, I kicked the camera stand. So um, I found this pattern, black and white, because it's only have a printer colors. I don't have a color printer. one with this this four, eight, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's six six giraffes. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> anyway, there's six giraffes on here. And um the this one is blue and this one is green and this one is red, but I'm using pink because the um the baby or the the toddler I should say she's about three or four years old I think. She she might even be older than that. But I think she's um loves pink and purple so i did this one in pink and this one's yellow and i think this one's supposed to be orange but i don't have any orange fabrics i went to my local quilt shop and purchased the black fabric i got a riley blake flat black color um 
this I'm right now I'm going to be working on the green one so these are the colors that I have for that oh that's turning out really bright but yeah I use a light color and a dark color in each one of them um, for the orange since I don't have and I have to take a look at them again I don't think the light was right but I could do a teal I do have these you don't need very much of the colored fabrics these are what I'm going to use for the purples this is a fat quarter you only need like a fat quarter of the light color which is the main body of the giraffe and then you only need like a fat eighth for and not even that I I think even a 10 inch square would be plenty you don't need a whole lot of the dark color the biggest piece is the nose so but I'm going to use these purples for that um, and it's just a flat black and it's a Riley Blake one that I got it's what eight dollars a yard or something of that nature um, so here's my board with colors and my little floss not floss <laughs> my little uh, bitties <laughs> alpha bitties to keep track of the pieces as I cut them out but I have three giraffes done and my first one is the blue one which is the daddy of them all here is his face isn't he just cute there's his neck there's his neck there's his neck <laughs> There's his neck. Oh, there comes the feet. I mean, he's huge. I mean, I think the quilt is, what is the measurement? 57 by 57. So this is almost 57 um, inches. So I got the blue one done. She wants this by the end of November, but I'm a procrastinator when it comes to the quilting portion of things so if I can get this pieced quickly then um because I don't know how I'm going to quilt this especially on black fabric I mean I use black thread and then the colored thread in the the giraffes but here is the yellow one here's his cute little face don't grab the thread his cute little face and his little tiny eyeballs and oh, this one's just a little bit longer the green one is the next longest one, so. And it's still smaller than the blue one. And then I've got the pink one done, too. So there's his face. And then he's much shorter. I can almost fit him in the, in the picture. Aren't, they're just adorable. So I also had an idea, and I don't know if I'm actually going to do this, but I wanted there's there's a picture of an elephant there's a quilt out there called the elephant and i or something like that where a girl is in front of the elephant and has a leash on the elephant and they're walking along and it's a foundation paper piece project so what i was thinking of doing was making this just a little bit wider and next to the small pink giraffe include a young girl and put a leash around it I don't know I'm gonna I'm going to play with this whole idea I'm gonna make the girl and then I'm going to make some bias tape and put a leash around and set it all next to it and see if it'll even work um, I found a pattern and it's called the Sophie Claire block and she is 12, 7 inches wide by 12 inches tall. And that's her. I think she's just adorable. But I thought I'd run the bias tape from her hands up around thing. And I've got some fabric <laughs> that I'd like to try and make a little dress and hat. And um, I think even one of the ideas is I've got black and white stripes. I've got thick ones and I've got thin ones to make uh, little striped socks for her, or tights, whatever they are. But I'm gonna give that a shot. Um, I'm not sure when I'll get to that. Hopefully I'll have something by the next video, because you have to have content, right? <laughs> and um, 
that's what we'll talk about next is because I when I went to get the Riley Blake fabric at my local quilt shop olive juice I love that name olive juice I found I picked up something I've been wanting for a very long time and I bought two fat quarter bundles of that and that's when I got into well that's not what got into it but uh, I picked up the tulip pink tiny beasts and tiny dots and stripes <laughs> I've got it the two bundle they're all taken apart right now but I um, bought two of them and I think one was called glow where I got this it is tulip pink tiny coordinates 19 piece fat quarter glow and a fat quarter glimmer so I'm not sure anymore which ones was glow and which ones was glimmer but look at this not just fun ah just fun total fun the deer the deer I love it anyway so these are the fabrics I was thinking I make the little dress out of um, like something like this and then make a striped bonnet so there's like a little uh, I don't know what that little animal is but isn't he just he just hiding in a porcupine or something oh he's the dandelion for his porcupines yeah he is just adorable actually this one's called who's your dandy because yep who's your dandy because that is a porcupine with dandelion quills so I don't know we'll think I, I don't know what color the dress will be or anything like that we gotta play with that this one here is kind of pretty I'm trying to think what's the animal that's in this one there's always an animal it's a fox he's kind of dancing through the flowers there so there's that or and I've already used one of these fat quarters but I think the other one would work too the ladybugs because I could pick from the ombre spray you know what color option you put in there so that's the idea for that so we'll see I'm looking forward to getting to that portion but I'm got the green fabric is ironed and I'm ready to start piecing the green giraffe together uh, I think I'll get all the giraffes done first so that way I know how wide it is and if it gets too big and she originally wanted a twin size quilt but um, this one here is not quite twin size but I can make it twin size but if I add the girl to it it's just making it wider and longer so I don't know I have to see what it does with the size of it but the whole idea of having and I could just piece the girl and make another small giraffe and put it in the back as the backing because I was looking at minkies and I could do a minky back on it so it's nice and soft and feeling uh -huh. could go so many ways with this my brain is on fire could use raccoons <laughs> pink and purple her favorite colors or we could do this one again how's your dandy there he is with teal or aqua porcupines. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see where we go with that one. Um, and I started this quilt on July 15th. And I've got three of those done so far. So what, we've gone 15 days and having fun with the free spirit fabrics. So I was working on... I wanted to get some of these finished for Christmas so I had some hexagons I was in the mood to working on my hexagons so I was working on these little lovelies 
Um, whoops. Finish that one. Just looking for some more handwork to do. This little hexy. These are Christmas, and this is a Holly Berry by Cory Yoder. Um, that one. And then this one here. I was playing already on the quilting. Um, if, instead of hand basting, if I did a stitching, I'm not real pleased with the stitching on that, but I did it on my Jazz too, which goes fast. It goes super fast, and I don't know how to control it. So I got to take those stitches out and use my singer over here. I think that'll work better. But what got me going on that one was I started quilting some other. I finished this one, so I was also playing with the quilting whether or not I wanted to actually, I quilted in between and whether or not I actually wanted to quilt on the tops of the, because they're hand stitched and if it gets a lot of use, I just did, I wanted to make sure they were going to stick. So I'm looking at hand stitching. So I was testing colors. This one here, I use the same color as I did on the background. I don't like that. So I'm going to take that out and use greens and reds. So we'll see how this all turns out. It just it has a white fabric on the back. It's got a little, if you can see it, yeah, it's got like paisley white on white motif. So let's stay inside. So it has a lining on the inside of the pillow. I was thinking I'd put them for sale out of my Etsy shop. We'll see, you know, again, when the product is finished, if it meets my standards, um, perfection standards it'll go on the website and so this one here is going to make the same one so depending on how they end up they may or may not be on the Etsy shop but that's what started the whole hexy thing <laughs> and so then I grabbed all of my tulip pink true colors and the tiny dots and stripes there's one of each in this one at least and uh, so this is going to be a project bag and it's going to be a vinyl one I did seven by nine seven rows by nine across and it's not big enough um, so like my all my other zipper pouches it's not big enough it's gonna need another row it's not wide enough so it's short and it's too narrow it's only like 12 inches so by the time you get binding on and and stuff like that it you won't even be able to fit an 8 by 12 pattern you know 8 by 10 pattern into it so i want it to be a little bit wider um it doesn't have to be as it, tallness it's fine it's just the wideness of it that's not so i'm gonna probably i'm gonna make another one and a seven by or eight by nine or eight by 10 um, roll. These are one inch hexes, all hand sewn together and it's ready for quilting. So I've got that, it's basted and ready to go. Um, I'm going to do, use this for the top part of the zipper and then one of these stripes will be the binding, I think. I don't know. Maybe there's an aqua one. I'll have to look at my bundle again and see if there's another one that makes more sense. But I think that's the route we're going with that. So the tiny dots and stripes. And I'll make another one of those. But in the meantime, I am making another one. This is another, I'll show you that one here in just a second. But that was my hexy kick. <laughs> I'm still on the hexy kick because I got another one to show you. But the other thing I was working on is my pillow sham cover. This is in Kim Deal. And just like the the other pillow, that one's more like a, um, a sofa pillow. This one here is a sham size, like for a regular standard pillow for your bed. This one I quilted. And I've got one in laundry basket quilts on my so fun I showed it in one of the other videos, but it is backed in another one of the Kim Deal. And this is, I think, a firm host Christmas, I think is what it's called, line. Um, so this one is ready to 
make the back of the quilt. I'm going to make a zipper backing. I'm going to use this red ticking for the back of it. And this is, I'm going to actually bind this one. The other one I just kind of threw, but I'm going to bind it in this fabric. So that's that. And that's one of the fabrics in the line, but I don't think it's one of the fabrics used in the, in the patchwork. So I need a drink. Um, see five weeks and I'm over an hour already. Um, my next hexi project, Nantucket summer. I'm going to use, uh, this Nantucket summer by Camille Ross Kelly, former Bonnie and Camille. She's on her own. You see, you can't see it. It's so pretty. So here's my project. I've got a box. I use my jolly box and I use this to carry all my supplies for. I'm making this one though out of quarter, three quarter inch hexes. I've got them glued to two in two and a quarter inch squares and I am um, basting hand basting with red them into three quarter inch hexes. So I've got a green one, some blue ones. I'm going to make a, like a, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to lay it all out later. Um, but these are all the white ones, white ones. Um, so I've got a pile of them already made and glued to the squares. So I just make those as I go along. I use this thread. It's a thick thread. I got this at Joann's. I think it's Clark's and Coates. But it's a quilting fabric. Um, these are squares that still don't have a hexi attached to it. I make my hexes. Um, I hand draw them out onto index cards. And I buy them at the dollar store. I get 200 in this pack, and I can get out of these three quarter inch hexes, I can get six of them on one card. So, and you can use the use these um, more than once. These are the ones I took out of the um, tool one that I just made. So those are the one inch ones. I've got them labeled so that I have them, and I'm going to connect you um, to a tutorial that this is where I got because I had been gluing them before and that just frustrated me because um, you get the glue too close to the edge and the needle wouldn't go through and I couldn't sew them. This method is amazing about the accuracy of your stitching, the accuracy of the the whole thing is just 100% accurate. You know, it's how you stitch it and whether your stitches show through. Um, mine don't really show through all that much. In some instances, they might because you get a little heavy handed with your stitching, but you can't see my stitches in there. Like this one here, you can see a little bit. I think I'm hoping the quilting kind of helps with that. But you don't see that. Um, and I like to grab, like some people just do one or two threads through each of the fabrics to go through the hexi when you're sewing them together. I like to take a big grab. Um, so if the stitching shows through, I mean, that's the whole point of hand stitching, right? You, you're going to see some of them. <laughs> I want to hide them all. Um, and with multicolored fabrics, I just used a gray thread. So... That might show through I'm not sure some of them it's completely hidden you don't know it um, I don't have a whole lot of variety of threads so I'm gonna have to get one of my myself one of those packets that has a whole bunch of different threads in it um, so I like to grab a lot of bigger stitches um, I do a lot of stitches but I like to grab more more of the fabric so that they they hold um, but I've never tried the hand basting with the thread, and it goes so fast. 
it goes really, really fast. I can get a lot more of these made. My whole thing goes faster. The whole process is faster. Um, what else I want to show you on this? So I got myself, I had been drawing them myself before and they're not, they weren't perfect. I wanted perfection. So I went and purchased these acrylic templates. I've got my sizes are in another one, but can you see these? <laughs> I'm not sure you can even see it. Is it's an acrylic template. And they are the so easy laser cut for precision. You get an eight-piece set and it goes all the way to I think three inch, a three-inch hexi um, is the largest one in here. I don't know that I'll ever make one that big. You never know. It's acrylic. You can't see it. it. I don't know why I'm even trying to figure it out. But I'll probably never make one that big. I don't think I'll make anything bigger than, you know, one inch. Just because I like a lot of fabric. But they, what they have is, to help me, is these little pre-drilled holes on each of the corners. So I can put that on my card that I'm going to make my hexing. It's too big for this. But on my index card that I'm using, I could put the little dot in there. And I could take my ruler or the edge of this and dot to dot to dot. And then I can cut them out. And they're perfect. Absolutely perfect. Can't miss it. So... I'm, it was an investment for me, well spent, even though I'm only going to use like two of them out of this whole thing. I think it was 16. I don't even know. I got it on Amazon. Um, again, this is the So Easy um, template. They have others too, diamonds and whatnot on them. So, But you can actually make the triangles out of these just by only connecting like I don't know, you find this, draw the whole thing, find the center, and then you can connect those dots and make the triangle ones. So I can, I'm very happy with that purchase and am making and working wonderfully on that. I, in here I have all of my other tools. I do, I have this Tim Holtz set of scissors. They're slightly serrated. They're very, very sharp. And they cut my hexes out perfectly. So I keep that in there. I do glue the paper to the center of the fabric. So um, it is glued to this. But this is the Fonz and Porter pen. But I fill it with... The glue refills that I think are so fine or whatever who, who makes it it's the same manufacturer as these and that is the Soline glue sticks they will fit in they fit in my Fonz and Porter pen because um, Fonz and Porter was sold at uh, at Joann's and I can get the Fonz and Porter refills but I put the Soline refills in here and I have a blue glue so and that's what I was using the glue before um, I was using these Elmer glue sticks before but that was just too fat and I'd have to use the edge of it in order to get the edge of the thing and that did, was too much so I went to the pen so I could get a finer spread of glue on each edge but now with this fabric bait uh, this thread basting no more. Um, that's what I'm doing. So this has got all of my little, uh, and I will, I was watching Kate Glass Homely House East of the Sea, I think is what it's called. I'll put a link below to that video where she talks about her hexes um, and what she's done. So she's from the UK and I adore her. She's just fabulously fun and really got me going on the, the hexy kick here and um, I don't know that I'll ever stop 
<laughs> now with Tula and and when I wanted a rainbow one and I got a rainbow one I think this is the top right corner so and I worked my way with the colors so I laid it all out on my um on my board these boards that I made see I gotta put something on the back so that these don't, things that on the bottom don't stick but I covered these with batting and I can stick pins in them so I that's what I did with that is I with the Tula one is I put the hexi on and I pinned it through any pin will work it doesn't matter I mean I used some really super long ones because that's all I had but it 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 helps me figure it out so this was actually too small this was the size that I used for that one so I'll have to go get some more of this um, foam board and I think actually these are ones that are already pre-cut in this size but you can get a large size and cut them down to whatever size you want so for whatever size bag that I want to make I'm going to cut my own foam board and cover it with batting and then I can use the the pins to to put them down so I'm gonna make all of these this is a charm pack of the um, Nantucket summer I cut it into fourths and then I cut that down even more because a two and a half inch square was too much fabric for the back of the hexi I like they have some substance in the back of these but uh, that was a little too much so I cut it down to two and a quarter so there was a bit of waste on that, but I got two of these while I was at my, when I got the two fabric <laughs> and the black fabric, I got two of these because Nantech is summer is going fast and I wanted to get my hands on something and a charm pack was fabulous. So I will show you where I'm at with that one. In the meantime, I'm just going to make all of the hexes first so i have all my colors because so i'm thinking blue and green there's two blues in this packet there's a light blue and a dark blue or a medium blue i should say and a dark navy and then there's a bunch of the lights and then the greens so i'm going to make navy light blue medium blue and green hex seeds and then I'm gonna round them out and um, do it scrappy with the lights all the way around and do a grandmother's flower garden type design and I think I can get three darker flowers and the rest is gonna be all the lights and stuff and then I will use this pack to make um, patchwork backs of my hex seeds I'd what gets me is I'd love to do a, a, a hexy backing on the two, but to me, if I'm going to quilt it then, and I'm going to be following the hexy lines, it has to completely match on the back side because that's what I'm thinking about quilting this is just following the, you know, going down this way, following the line and going down. And it would have to match on the back and that's just going to be a little bit frustrating to get that set up so that they match perfectly um because you know there's it's hand done it they're perfect but can i do that realistically so either it's going to be a flat fabric in the back but i think i'm going to stick and do it all in the next Texas summer and i can make two or three i think i have enough there's plenty of fabric um because I'll get four squares out of each one of these and there's 42 and then the same thing with this one so I can make you know two or three bags I believe just out of these two churn packs this is that that's the plan and then I've also already started thinking about um mechanic or um, Mackinac Island by Minnick and Simpson that churn pack and then I've also got this one this is an older one this is Allison Harris, Backyard Booms. So, I don't know. These are cute. This could be another rainbow. It's got chickens on it. I mean, you can fussy cut motifs on them. I mean, it's endless. <laughs> I love. 
Hexes. All right, what else am I working on? Oh, I think I've only got one more thing to think about here. Let me put these things back in here. I use a mechanical pencil with very fine 0.5 lead so I can get perfect. Um, I do need to... I then, once I, once I make my cardboard or my index card template of the center, because these plastic templates have a quarter inch seam on the, includes a quarter inch seam. So I make those, fill in those dots, draw out my actual, the filler, not the quarter inch seam allowance, um, of the size of this. This is like the center of the, the acrylic template. Here is my one inch one. So it has the quarter inches included in that. So I will just draw from point to point to point on a piece of paper and then I transfer it to a plastic template, to template paper, plastic, template plastic. And then I will cut it out of this. And this is the one that I will use over and over and over again to draw on my. Um, index cards. I don't use a pen. I will use a mechanical pencil that has a very fine lead so that it's exactly this size and then cut exactly on that line and all of my hexes will match. So when you I have some of these here. So when you cut them all out and you get them all together, they exactly they're exactly the same. I don't have any that are bigger than the other or anything like that. So these are some of the one inch ones that I have left. And I'm going to make another two of one. Sorry, there's somebody's doing some gutter work across the street and the guys are outside cutting gutters in the. So I have an envelope inside of this little bag. It's got all kinds of little templates in here leaves, motifs, and for other applique things that I've done. So that envelope might get bigger and bigger as I make some more, but I've got a box. It's got the cards in it. I got all my Tula fabrics here. I've got um, one of each color, at least. There's at least, you know, four or five of each color actually in there. And then I've got the Nantucket Summer here. And in there I've got, these are the ones I've pulled out. These are the ones I've made. I have a, in this box also, I have this uh, June Taylor mini. This is the ironing side, and this is the cutting side. So this is where I cut those five inch squares from. I use my five by five ruler, creative grids ruler. So that all stays in this box. I have in here, here's my binding and my um, hexi toolkit. It's got my, got my thimble. <laughs> got my thimble. I use this one by Dritz, I believe it is. It's got my three quarter inch plastic template. I have a um, needle minder in here. It's actually my Tula Pink. And I think she had these made specifically for printing for hexes. So I've got two needles in here. One for the actual with a thicker thread to do the basting and then one to actually do the sewing so one's thinner and then i also have this wonder clip in here so sometimes i use the clip and sometimes i use the needle minder um, to hold the hexes together and then i do have a spool of the gray thread in here um, that i did use and it's all orofill not always because they don't sell it at my joann's but um, so I do have that, and that's in actually a binder clip packaging. So, but that's my toolkit. And let's get this out of the way. I have had this mechanical pencil for like twenty years. Yeah, it needs a new eraser. But all right, so let's get this all cleaned up, and then I'll show you the other thing that is on my to-do list, and then we're all done. So, when I can fit this into my rotation, I am going to, and I did this last year, Fat Quarter Shop has a sew-along, 
every year. Well, I don't know if it's every year. How long have I done this? But I did it last year. And this is the quilt that I made last year with their sew along. And I think it's just a four week sew along. But I did this. This was last year's project. Bats, pumpkins. Um, and I did this out of Tim Holtz Halloween fabric line. All Tim Holtz fabrics, except for I think this background fabric is actually um, from Primitive Gatherings and it's a primitive muslin. It's not actual muslin, it's a cotton to look like muslin. So it's got some, um, what do you call it? Like the tea staining look to it or whatever. Um, I put that on the back and some of my mistake pieces <laughs> I stuck on the back in the little motif. So I thought this was going to be the star that was going to go in the front, but I didn't like the fabric choices. These I made backwards, so they just went in the back. And I did a um, spider web quilting motif. So I quilted from corner to corner, and then I did um, a webbing between each of those lines. So, yeah, this center star I was going to do in that but I didn't like it and I like this one better so and I still got a whole bunch of this orange fabric so I might be making something else out of that but I have a whole bunch of this fabric left and there was different patterns but this is this one goes on my dining room table every fall now um that one that I did last year and now this year they, their soul along was called Boo Crew, the mystery, and they are motifs of a hat, a witch's broom, cat. Um, this is a free one, so I'm not sure you can get out there quick enough. You can get, oh, I printed off the final layout, but I haven't put it with the package yet. But so like here's the cat in the cauldron. Here is the witch's hat and the broom, which was the first one. And then, oh, I have two of those. Oh, here. <laughs> the ghost and the candle. So while I was at, and I have fabric that I could have used. But while I was at Hall of Juice, I bought a fat quarter bundle. What I got was Kimberbell. Nope, that's not it. What did I get? I don't even know who they keep made by now. I lost my little label. I took it. I took the bundle apart. But I think it's. I'm not even gonna say because I don't want to get it wrong. But I picked this fabric bundle. It's a fat quarter bundle. So this is a bunch of different potion bottles. Um, this one here has got a little animal and leaves. I don't even know what that is. It's a bat. It's a bat. See the bat. Here's his wings. Um, here's the same thing. It's got spider webs on it. Little florals. Um, they're black. And then there's this black dot. There's some fangs with blood, black with a purple spider web. There is this scenery. I don't know that I'll actually use this because it's such a big, it's a big pattern. Could be like the back, go on the back or something maybe. Um, there's the orange skeletons, orange webbing. There's another little floral motif, but I'm thinking I'm going to use this. I'm not thinking. I am using this line of fabric. I really wish I knew what this was. Now, if I can think, if I can find out what it is, I'll 
put it in below, but um, I'll mention it in the description box. There's some witches um, clothing, her clothing line. <laughs> there's like no selvage on this, but there's hats and cauldrons and boots and whatnot. And then there's this one. I'm going to make, use that to make this one. And I want to have this one done by October, so I don't know how long I'm going to start on this by the next video. Just because, you know, I might. <laughs> it seems to go four or five weeks before I actually get a video out. There's bats and stars on black. And then this is going to be my background. So there was a fat quarter in that bundle of the purple. And then I just purchased four more. So I've got a full yard here and a quarter. So we've got plenty of fabric to make it. I wanted to do something a little bit more different and a little more modern. It might end up in my Etsy store. I'm not sure. We'll have to see how well it all works out. Because the sweet and spookier is what it's called. Now, who the actual people, the designer is, I'm not exactly 100% sure. I can't even guess right now because the name is escaping me. But that's the that's um, a new project I have in, in, in store. So hopefully by the next video, I'll have a little girl on the front or the back of my giraffe quilt. I'll have the boot crew started. I'll have pillows made. I'll have this bag made. Um, Nantucket Summer Hexagon Grandma's Flower Garden might be made. So I, you know... I do whatever, whatever hits me. So I put um, Color My World aside. I'm not going to get to that one. I might get to that one after I finish Mom's Quilt. And I don't know if I'll get back to it. I've taken it off the wall except for the big center circle. Um, um, I was also working on old... Um, say can you see so along with um primitive gatherings with the laundry basket quilts red and green fabrics and off whites and that one's kind of been put on hold i'm collecting all of the monthly quilt patterns the patterns that are coming out and holding that aside because i still might do that i just not sure that that's really what I wanted. I think it looked a lot better in red, white, and blue, so I might save that for a red, white, and blue fabric that come along, but I have to see because it's a complete mystery, and I'm kind of like, what's happening here? We're made Ohio stars with a nine-patch center. But then there's a second block, so it still might work. And Christmas fabric colors, reds and greens. But we'll see. We shall see. I'm going to keep that one open-minded yet on that one. And another Halloween project I'm going to pull out will be for another video because I don't think I'll get started on that yet. But I do want to get finished back to work on a um, orange peel All Hallows Eve Um project that I'm working on so stay tuned for that um, I did show that in prior videos so if you want to look that up I'd like to get back to that one I want to get that one done I want to get going on that so I like stitching for Halloween so I might also um, do some bags I have all that Tim Holt fabric what's left of that to use up so we'll see Thank you for being here and watching me scatterbrain going off on different tangents of things. Um, I have a lot of quilt tops to quilt and I've got a lot of things going on. So you never know what I'm going to be doing um, in, in the meantime. And when life throws you lemons, you bring your stitching along. And like when my mom had her, you know, surgery, I just grab those and take them 
packed it in a suitcase and took it along and stayed with mom for a while and you never know I might have to do it again and then the overnights I sleep so when I'm, I'm work and days that I work I do hexes or cross stitch and then on the days that I'm off I uh, quilt so um, I'm off this weekend I do work overnight tonight so I'll be working on tomorrow and Sunday I'll be working on mom's quilt and the giraffe quilt and I'll be I'll try to quilt this and um, get the get a pillow one pillow made maybe I don't know we'll see I mean those Christmas it's not I'm not in a rush to get those Christmas projects done so but come join me next time Please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notifications too, because you never know when I might pop in and throw a video in. I could do another one on Sunday. I just might. Thank you. Take care. Love you. Bye.